Lucky Land Casino asking people what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kids' PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hey, all. Welcome back to the Real Life Pharmacology podcast. I'm your host, Eric Christensen, and I thank you so much for listening today. Uh, as always, want to remind you to go to reallifepharmacology.com and uh, s- subscribe to get the free 31-page PDF of the top 200 drugs. So, a uh, great little study guide if you're going through, you know, nursing school, nurse practitioner school, pharmacy school, uh, med school, for example. Um, so, go definitely take take advantage of that. And um, let's get into the drug of the day today. So, that drug is going to be propofol, which the brand name is Diprovan. And you may hear this medication uh, referred by its nickname as well. And uh, it's referred as uh, milk of amnesia because the uh, liquid for injection has a white color, interestingly. So if you're anything like me, uh, when we think of history, uh, I'm always intrigued by medications in, in history and how they come up in the lay public. And if you remember uh, several years ago now, uh, propofol was actually the medication that killed uh, Michael Jackson. So after that happened, there was obviously all sorts of press, all sorts of, uh, you know, different restrictions and obviously an investigation into how this happened and and all that sort of stuff. But um, it was a really, really unfortunate and sad situation. But I think it helped uh, people understand that, there's risks when using medications and, and particularly um, higher risks when using them in a uh, non-hospital uh, type situation. So um, definitely, if, if you are, are interested, go back and, and read the story uh, on Michael Jackson and the use of propofol. But this was uh, essentially the, the drug that um, killed Michael Jackson, unfortunately. Uh, so what's this medication used for? Well, it is a CNS depressant basically used for uh, general anesthesia, uh, intubation, procedural sedation. Um, Off-label, um, it has been potentially used for refractory uh, seizures in some patients uh, where benzos and, and our other first-line agents maybe don't work. Um, so how does this medication work? Uh, like I mentioned, it's a CNS depressant, technically classified uh, as that, and it potentially does that by a couple of different mechanisms. Um, first, GABA agonist activity. So if we remember, that's kind of similar uh, to uh, benzodiazepine activity a little bit there, and also potentially uh, reduces uh, glutamate activity. So if you remember glutamate, that is an excitatory uh, neurotransmitter in the brain. Uh, and it blocks that glutamate by uh, blocking NMDA receptors there. Uh, dosage forms, obviously, it's it's used as an injection, as an infusion. Um, but recently, I did want to mention, um, at least in the, the short term here in 2020, uh, as you're listening to this podcast, uh, the FDA did allow emergency use authorization of a higher uh, dose or higher concentration. Okay, so obviously this being uh, an agent for ICU sedation is a very high risk medication. And I have to caution you, whenever we've got multiple strengths for a high risk medication, uh, we've got to be really, really careful uh, that we're getting the, the right dose and the right concentration, okay? This is exactly the type of situation where uh, medication errors happen and patients can easily be uh, overdosed uh, if we get that uh, dosage form wrong there. So really, really uh, pay attention if your institution or where you're working at um, is using um different concentrations or different strengths. And I would say that goes for uh, any medication in general there. So um, 
we've got this fear of, of shortages with, with uh, you know, COVID still kind of uh, full out. Um, so that's why they, they authorize the use of uh, alternative uh, concentrations there. So what are the advantages of propofol? So this is something that's often calculated in, in practice. You know, what are the advantages and disadvantages of propofol compared to uh, other you know, CNS depressing agents for general anesthesia. So probably one of the biggest advantages of propofol, uh, super quick uh, onset, uh, very quick offset. And it is incredibly lipid soluble. And if you remember um, things from biochemistry and things like that, very lipid soluble agents, small molecule agents, um, can pass the blood brain barrier uh, very efficiently and, and very quickly. So that makes sense why it's got a very quick onset of action. It gets into that, that brain quickly there. Um, also, uh, potential advantages that can be nice uh, may have some anti-seizure effects. So if you remember, I mentioned um, potentially can be used off-label for seizures. Uh, so that can be um, beneficial in certain scenarios. Uh, generally okay in, in renal and hepatic impairment. Um, sometimes other agents aren't. Uh, lower incidence of uh, post-op nausea and vomiting compared to other agents. So that can um, certainly be, be advantageous and uh, nice for our patients uh, in some situations there. And then possibly a little bit better for patients with uh, respiratory issues such as asthma and things like that. So uh, those are our potential advantages of propofol. Now let's talk about um, potential disadvantages and or um, adverse effects. Uh, so as we escalate dose, um, we've got a dose-dependent effect of uh, hypotension potentially, so lower blood pressure. Obviously, we're, we're going to be monitoring patients closely um, in this situation where we're using uh, general anesthesia, uh, but certainly patients with, you know, maybe that lower borderline blood pressure already, uh, or maybe elderly patients, for example, that's a good um, situation where we might be a, lot, uh, a little extra cautious and maybe monitor a little bit more closely there. Uh, some other potential disadvantages, uh, you may uh, hear painful injection reported, uh, this medication also is uh, a lipid emulsion. So whenever we have uh, potential availability of, of energy and food for bacteria, uh, that risk for bacteria uh, growth certainly is there. So that's something we got to be a little bit uh, careful about. And then we've got uh, propofol-related infusion syndrome. So you may hear the, the term PRIS, P-R-I-S, thrown about. Uh, it's a potential uh, exam question, uh, definitely, that, that may come up. And this propofol-related infusion syndrome uh, is related to higher doses and longer uh, period of use. So generally, that's uh, considered uh, greater than, than 48 hours. So as we increase the dose and as we uh, use propofol for longer periods of time, uh, we've got to be aware that uh, this propofol-related infusion syndrome uh, can happen or that risk goes up. And what that can result in is uh, metabolic acidosis, uh, cardiovascular collapse, uh, drop in pulse, elevated lipids, uh, rhabdomyolysis, renal failure, liver impairment. So there's a lot of potential uh, complications from this uh, syndrome. So it's definitely something that we uh, have to, to look out for. Again, very, very rare, uh, but obviously some of those things that I listed uh, can be very, very uh, serious there as well. Uh, just finishing up here on, on monitoring parameters, uh, so blood pressure, certainly we're going to monitor cardiac status in general there, uh, O2 saturations, uh, ABGs, and uh, as we are on propofol for longer and longer periods of time, uh, we're certainly going to monitor for that risk of acidosis, uh, may check CPK, uh, electrolytes as well. Uh, so keep that in mind as far as monitoring parameters and anticipated uh, length of use of propofol. 
All right, so let's take a quick break from our sponsor and we'll wrap up with drug interactions. If you're in the market for pharmacist board certification study material, definitely go check out meded101.com slash store. We've got everything from NAPLEX to pharmacotherapy exam, ambulatory care, uh, BCM, TMS, and of course the geriatric exam as well. Uh, if you're not a pharmacist, definitely uh, check out our free Audible book. So if you've never had an Audible book in the past, if you've never tried Audible, uh, you can get your first book for free. Uh, through audible.com and I've got a 10-hour book on drug interactions that you definitely need to, to go check out and take advantage of that. So you can find uh, those links, all those links at meded101.com slash store. All right, so finishing up on drug interactions with propofol. Uh, all the major uh, drug interactions, at least in, in my mind or that come to my mind, uh, again, this isn't a, a totally exhaustive list of drug interactions, um, but the big ones I think about are, are synergistic effects. Um, so CNS depressants uh, adding on top of each other, so using propofol with an opioid, for example, is going to lead to um, likely a synergistic effect, CNS depressant type effect. So uh, what this means, if you've got a patient on propofol and we're adding an opioid on top of that, uh, that may uh, reduce the requirements for propofol and we may need to uh, back off on doses. Uh, same thing with benzodiazepines. Uh, this really makes a lot of sense. Remember uh, the mechanism of action of benzodiazepines. They act on uh, GABA, that inhibitory uh, neurotransmitter. And propofol potentially also has that uh, mechanism. So again, using propofol and benzodiazepines, uh, you can really enhance uh, that CNS depressant effect. Uh, I would also say that that falls in line with uh, something like a Z drug as well. So your Ambien's and things like that. So Zolpidem, um, that can obviously have that uh, additive effect there as well. And then the one last one I wanted to touch on uh, was additive uh, blood pressure lowering effects. So remember, propofol um, may cause a little bit of uh, reduction in uh, blood pressure. So having other agents on board uh, can certainly contribute to that. Now, we're probably going to be monitoring blood pressure pretty closely. Uh, but of course, we need to be uh, aware of agents as we increase doses, change doses, and things like that. All right, so that wraps it up for today. If you enjoyed the podcast, leave a rating and review. Uh, definitely a reminder to, to go subscribe at reallifepharmacology.com. Uh, get that free 31-page uh, PDF, good little refresher on the top 200 drugs. And, of course, support our sponsor, meded101.com slash store. All right, well, I'm going to wrap it up. Thanks so much for listening. Take care and have a great rest of your day. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.